Well, thank you, Adam. We're back here at the Cube. We're live at the FIDA in Barcelona, and we're here in Cloud City, which is just amazing. We're really excited to have two guests here from a company called Data on Tap. Algis Axtinas is the founder and CEO, and Alex Bauman is also a co-founder and CXO. Again, Data on Tap. Guys, welcome to the Cube. Thanks so much for coming yeah, on. Happy Thanks to be for here. having us. Algis, let's start with you. Tell, tell us about Data on Tap. It's a great name. Uh, yeah, thank you for. Um, we are designing and, uh, and building um, digital attacker brands built entirely in public cloud. What, what does that mean, digital attacker brands? So tell us more about that. Um, I, I think uh, when you want to launch now a new wireless service provider, um, you have this challenge either built from current infrastructure or build something as a greenfield operation. Uh, we think building something anew is, provides these new opportunities, so that's, uh, that's where we are. You guys know, when you start a company with a blank sheet of paper, it's an exciting time. Why did you f start the company, uh, Alex? That's a, a good question. I think, I think for me, I mean, you know, I'm sure we both had our own reasons, but the biggest one for me was uh, being held back on delivering the types of customer experiences that people were expecting. So uh, telecom um, is notoriously slow moving, uh, deliver great, product, but take time to get there. And uh, and you see all kinds of over-the-top products uh, kind of leapfrogging ahead and uh, needing the lunch of telecoms in some places. Uh, and kind of being held back uh, in that kind of older, you know, the, the full sheet of paper um, really drove us to decide what can we do with the blank sheet, how do we go greenfield, you know, all this new cloud technology, what types of things does it unlock for us, and that's uh, really the impetus for it. So. so what are you actually selling? What's the service or product that you're selling? Um, we, we started in Canadian market. Uh, Canadian market is uh, maybe considered underserved uh, in uh, you know when you compare to other markets. And uh, we started with um, uh, this full MNO concept, building out from core network all the way to uh, consumer application, um, including e-commerce, including uh, other kind of value-added services from the get-go, even before we launched, uh, before we launched our wireless service proposition. It's very hard to get into Canadian market. Uh, we're still bat battling out with regulator uh, on, on that front, um, uh, but we're building a tech stack for Canada and for other countries to, uh, uh, to in the model of the fintech, in the model of uh, this new business model that's uh, uh, becoming available with, with public cloud. So public policy is obviously a big part of this, where you have to ride on top of the existing infrastructure, at least get permission to do that, and that's kind of your business model, right? Yeah, exactly. It, um, the infrastructure exists, um, uh, very good networks in Canada, and I, I believe elsewhere in the world as well, um, but uh, this is the age of service innovation. Public cloud kind of brings that service innovation to the front uh, rather than, you know, differentiating on, uh, on the, uh, network technologies, which is kind of commoditized thing. Uh, the new way of, of thinking is, is about uh, service innovation, about what can you build on existing infrastructure, how can you use elements in the public cloud, new economy, new business models to, uh, to create this uh, new, new business. So let's talk about cloud economics, specifically uh, public cloud. When we mm -hmm. say cloud, we mean public cloud, not, yeah. not fake cloud. So, so you've got you've got cloud, you've got you've got cross cloud, you know, kind of imagining this abstraction layer cutting across clouds or extending to the edge. You're talking about the cloud suppliers; they look at the 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 the, the edge as this opportunity. They see data centers as just another edge node. So, talk about how do you think about public cloud economics as it relates to your business and your customers? I'm sure. So, um, you know, going with that blank sheet of paper and building uh, out. Uh, and kind of the entire stack, exactly from start to finish, everything you need from core to customer to deliver a customer experience, to deliver all the tools that are necessary to sell in a completely digital model. Um, the economics for us, when you look at the public cloud, uh, allow you to do a kind of a composite application approach of using the API economy. You can just pick exactly what you need from individual pieces that exist out in the market, um, and typically uh, cloud-based uh, products as well. And by kind of building in that model, uh, you can really narrow down a per subscriber economic as a carrier um, that's kind of wasn't feasible before, uh, you know. And on top of that, that kind of capex, the the time to market, all those things are so small compared to what you used to have. As long as you're building out kind of in that model. So, is your strategy to enable service providers and carriers to move beyond connectivity? Is that 
is that uh, even is it feasible, or or is it an ecosystem that gets built around that? On top of that, uh, our, our vision is that, and, and this is typical of a lot of uh, subscription-based uh, uh, verticals. Um, you you need the subscriber, but you need to know them on a one-to-one -one basis. You need that person, not just a billing account number. Uh, and then once you've got that, and you've got your core business around them, it is about all the other things that you can build, um, kind of an ecosystem around that customer. So it could be enabling. Um, other verticals within the uh, telco tech stack. It could just be about making sure that they have uh, kind of our first approach is you need to be digital. You need to have a digital experience. It needs to be good. It needs to be premium. It can't just be a digitization like the clipboard onto the iPad. It needs to be a real rethought greenfield experience to be competitive in the future. Well, because when you think about the brands and you know, well, the pandemic, we're all watching movies and, and viewing on demand. The experience that we have with those services is awesome. Right. Absolutely. The sales, the marketing, the service, all integrated into one. And you think about the experience that you have with traditional telcos and it's just frustration. And so, so you're, you're enhancing that experience. That's what it's all about, that, that user experience. Yeah, if you, if you go into our app um, in, in Canada right now and go into a marketplace tab, you, you would kind of feel like in Netflix a bit because uh, you know, uh, the subscriptions plans uh, are just part of uh, the range of products you can be buying from, from us. And it truly depends on the customer segment and type, and then on the particular uh, customer, what we would bring up front for them to, to consume. Um, you know, if it's a youth uh, customer, a student, or a, perhaps a, a, a new Canadian or new immigrant to a uh, to certain place, they might need a banking product, and we might have a prepaid uh, uh, MasterCard or Visa available for them to, uh, to order together with an eSIM, eSIM card, or uh, they might, if they're a university student, they might be buying certain clothing products or, or other things from uh, around for that university, or, or, or so on and so forth. The customization is, is endless, and personalization could be really truly personal and uh, machine learned, and, and so on and so forth. And if I could add, Please. the um most people don't describe themselves in terms of gigabytes. They have other things that they like and other things that make them who they are. And being able to uh, to understand who somebody is and deliver things outside of just like here is a plan with gigabytes or here are minutes uh, is really the next step. Um, you know, you, you need to be able to put something other than one GB on a poster. You know, it's interesting you say that, Alex, because you're right. We don't think in as consumers, we don't think in terms of gigabytes. But underneath all this is data. It's all about the data. And and when I think about industries that are data intensive, like telco, financial services is another example. These organizations build data products, and the time it takes for them to build data products is, is too long. The, the, the user experience is, is oftentimes too cumbersome. And, and I, think, I think there's a new metric that's going to emerge in the industry is how long as a business person does it take me to go from idea to monetization? That's what I mean, the new industry KPI. You heard it here first in the queue. <laughs> because it's all about building data products in the, in, the, in the digital world. And so when I think about what you're doing, if I understand it correctly, you're allowing the digital service providers to be, first of all, become digital, and then build data products very quickly, configure them very quickly, and yeah. offer them to their consumers. Yeah, I like that I to M idea to monetization. And I yeah. think, yeah, shortening that time is really important, but it's, uh, it goes beyond just like, you know, configuring a data product. Um, it's uh, anything that you could uh, pull together within your own ecosystem or combinations of ecosystems or bundles of things. Um, you know, as a marketer, uh, that idea comes to you and you want to test it. It's, you know, it's idea to test monetization. monetization. Um, so, you know, if you can rapidly test things, iterate on them uh, from an interface that happens in real time and you've got customers that are the data model and the construct around them is customer centric. So your marketing can be customer centric. Um, that's really the world we're building. And what's the ecosystem look? How are you envisioning and thinking about the ecosystem evolution? Well, the starting point was obviously look at the retail store and look what's in the store and kind of have all of that um, as, as a starting point. So uh, you, you have that covered, but uh, you, you, can go, you can go outside um, and, and see who else is selling what to, to that mobile consumer of yours. And, and trust me, all those ecosystem partners are eager to, to get in this digital uh, kind of platform because um, you, they, want, they want that access to the consumer um, and they want a, a targeted access to that consumer. Mm -hmm. um, and 
looking at what other uh, perhaps opportunities and, and values exist outside of it, um, people um, pass down the phones to their, their kids and their senior members of the family. We try to sell their used phones. Um, we, we, we started um, um, monetizing or started developing um, systems that allow um, uh, members to sell to members something that uh, you know uh, is is maybe part of uh, a different marketplaces but if you can get uh, that process going and you can be a trusted party that handles these things that's a, a really exciting opportunity um, for certain segments specifically. Well, that's the thing the cloud enables. You can create these marketplaces and you can build your own ecosystems. And that's sort of the next phase. Last 10 years, we're going to be different than the next 10 years of cloud. And one of the big differences is the pace at which you can develop these ecosystems. I mentioned uh, financial services. Is that a, 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 an industry segment that's ripe for this wireless transformation? Are there other segments that you guys are looking at? I think uh, FinTech is maybe um, a good example of what uh, telecom should be uh, uh, not necessarily mirroring, but at least looking to for inspiration because they've uh, kind of leapfrogged a little bit in terms of uh, being open, opening up architecture, allowing that kind of service level innovation. Um, so, you know, one thing is to create some digital transformation or digital greenfield operation for uh, a network operator. Um, but kind of the next step is uh, allowing other types of experimentation on top of what you've built and kind of FinTech is a good model for that. The cloud absolutely enables it. Um, I mean, you know, up until cloud, I don't think we could have a conversation about, uh, you know, a carrier opening up for other people to experiment in their platforms or on their systems, but the cloud really does allow for that. Um, and I think, uh, you know, smaller groups of very capable minds will come up with things that we can't even dream up right now. Uh, and that's sure. the kind of stuff that you want to have happening first on your network and be enabling it and then pull it in and pull those minds into, into your teams. Like attra attracting talent that can deliver the things we're talking about is also going to be important. We, we talk about in the Cube about the API economy all the time. I know we talk about opening up the telcos and it scares mm -hmm. people a lot. You know, can we replicate the reliability of the network with open APIs and open no RAM and open systems? Uh, but, but are there examples of sort of op open APIs, the API economy in this digital service provider world? Um, I, I think there are. Um, I think, uh, you know, if you come from IP, uh, VoIP uh, ecosystem, they're a lot more open um, uh, and networks should be in a, in a similar place, I think. Um, um, it, it provides opportunities. Insure tech is there, security, home security, IoT, um, everything kind of come to play uh, when you think about it. When uh, when you have um, uh, an app on on each each of your consumer's phone, you have I think endless opportunities. Uh, you have to be provide certain stickiness. You have to provide certain engagement. Why would people come back to you? Um, gamification, loyalty. Um, other things can come to play um, uh, to provide this wholesome experience on why people would come back to you, not just uh, for you know service things. I saw in some of your material, private by design. What, what is that? Uh, I think um, so. It's it's a bit of a, a mindset and a strategy when you're uh, when you're developing everything in your platform. Um, as a, as a telecommunications provider, you collect like an absurd amount of information about people, particularly if you've architected in a way that you know who every one of those people is. Um, and there's a little bit of a, uh, a need to respect some of that data, respect some of the privacy that may be around that. Um, and building within the cloud and constructing new data models around how that data is, uh, is uh, stored, what things exist in a wallet, what traceability happens and audibility happens on that data uh, is really important as you consider the future. Because we're already seeing lots of regulation around privacy and data and data processing. Um, so you can't like build now and think, oh, whatever, we'll change it later. You, a little bit forward thinking is very important for, uh, for this um, type of field. Yeah, and, and I think starting point is, is important of how easy is it to get in and start with telecom telecommunications provider. You'll see during MWC and other events, people are trying to re-engineer the onboarding experiences. Um, I, I think that first step has to be very, very easy for user to take uh, and uh, to get in, into ecosystem. So just email, good to go, just as any other app, and and that and that's a starting point. And then the rest of it is sort of on demand when needed. Uh, that's you know with the value you grow. So uh, telecoms usually try to run the credit check before you even 
you know, before you even know the name. Yeah. <laughs> Find me just first, right? <laughs> hey, guys, we've got to leave it there. Thanks so much. Congratulations on getting off the ground. Thank you. Man. Adam, it's buzzing here. Back to you.